DMS stands for dimethyl sulfide. Dimethyl sulfide. You can also use uh, zinc in acetic acid for the second step, but I guess, well, if, if you guys have seen that. So the second step could be either DMS, dimethyl sulfide, or I believe zinc in acetic acid is another common reagent there. All right, does anyone know what would happen here? I know that it yields, it breaks a carbon-carbon bond to make a double-bonded O, two double-bonded O's. Okay, yeah. And this is another case where you should know the mechanism in case you're asked about it, but you should never really draw the mechanism unless you're specifically asked. And again, the mechanism is in the second language book, so you can kind of just look at that. So let's just go through um, the products here, which are very important. Um, so this is actually one of my favorite reactions. This is very simple. You draw a very long double bond, a long double bond, then you erase the middle, and you put in two oxygens. And this is how you get the product. This is what's called ozonolysis, right? Ozonolysis. Basically, you take the carbon-carbon double bond and turn it into two carbonyls. And you can do that mechanically just by drawing a very long double bond and putting two oxygens in the middle of the double bond. Like I said, the only time you should ever draw the mechanism here is if you were specifically asked about it. And the mechanism is in the second language book, so you can drill on that. But for just predicting products, you can just do this step. Why is this called ozonolysis? Well, this is ozone, and lysis means breaking. So this is breaking a double bond with ozone. Yeah, so let's take a few minutes to talk about this, because this is a very important uh, reaction here. So far, so good. Notice that these are two separate steps. The first step is always adding ozone. And then the second step is a reducing agent, DMS, dimethyl sulfide here, Me2S is a good one, or zinc and acetic acid you might see used as well. So the second step could be either the zinc or the Me2S. All right, and the important thing is to be able to quickly draw a good product here. So let's draw the product from this reaction. Let's just use that same method I just mentioned. Draw a long double bond and do the erasing and adding trick. So I've just drawn a long double, long double bond. I'll erase the middle. And put in oxygens. Here's the product. By the way, what type of functional group is this? Carboxylic acid. That would be this. So it's not a carboxylic acid. This is a carbonyl containing compound. Is this an aldehyde or a ketone? Ketone. Aldehyde. Yeah, what's this? This is an aldehyde. And this is a ketone. Ozonolysis always gives you aldehydes or ketones. Ozonolysis always gives you aldehydes or ketones. It's actually pretty, uh, it's usual for an aldehyde to show the aldehyde hydrogen. So you might see it drawn like this. Usually we don't treat the aldehyde hydrogen as hidden. But I think you would get full credit even if you left the hydrogen out. One interesting thing here is notice that the molecule, uh, in the, the previous example I gave you, the ozonolysis gave us two separate molecules, whereas this ozonolysis gave us one connected molecule. But we can just see that by just using our mechanical trick here for breaking this double bond. So if you start with an alkene and end with um, two double bonded oxygens, then you use ozonolysis. That's right. Let's look at one or two other examples.
as Duo's analysis here. assume that we have uh, excess ozone and we're going to be able to cleave all the double bonds. We draw long double bonds. So for this double bond, again, I'm going to erase the middle and put in some oxygens. Now, this one's a little tricky. This one will make much more sense to you if you put in the two hydrogens down here. Otherwise, you get something that looks kind of funny. If we put down these two hydrogens, then it's not too hard to work with this now. We erase the middle of the double bond, and we get this. This right here is the smallest possible aldehyde. This is a one carbon aldehyde. We briefly talked about this in the past. This is formaldehyde, a one carbon aldehyde. Um, usually an aldehyde has a carbon chain and a hydrogen, but if you have two hydrogens attached to the carbonyl, that's also a aldehyde. That's formaldehyde. So here's one product. Here's the other product. And here's the other, other product, the third product. So we get three different products here. So ozonolysis problems are too easy if there's only one double bond. You're likely to see a, pro uh, uh, a problem where there's maybe, I don't know, four or five double bonds, and they ask you to draw the product. So you how want to drill on how to do that. How did you know to put those H's? Well, of course, the H's were there all the time, right? Oh, yeah. Right, they're percent. always there. Okay. It's just that, in this case, it's convenient to draw the H's, because if you don't draw the H's, you get something that looks funny. Yeah. It just looks funny. It looks less funny if you put the hydrogens in there. So on this one, we got two ketones in a form aldehyde. Uh, let's think about that. Here we have a ketone. Yeah. What's this? Uh, What's this functional group here? Oh, that's a carbonyl. What type of carbonyl? These are all carbonyl-containing compounds. It's an this is another ketone, ketone. right? Uh, well, actually, this is a little tricky because we've got two carbonyls next to each other. We haven't quite learned about that. So I don't know. I don't know if you'd really bother giving this a name. But anyway, here we have a carbonyl attached to an aldehyde group. You might call this over here. I don't even know myself exactly what the name is. I guess you would call this a, uh, I guess this is called an alpha keto aldehyde, but, but that's not too important. The important thing is with being able to draw the structure. Here we got the formaldehyde. All right, so again, you can expect for an ozonolysis problem to have lots of double bonds that you have to cleave. 